Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Manny B investing in BI. And we've got a Paribus blog post here I wanted to read through. It's called A Glimmer of Hope. I think it's it's fitting. I think it's appropriate. Let's take a look at the article and see what we're talking about here. Following, this is from March 13th, uh, Glimmer of Hope. Following on from last week's drama, this week sees more uncertainty in the banking, tech, and crypto sector. While the U.S. has been pushing a hardline policy of monetary tightening, it now looks like the global financial system and tech sectors are on the brink of breaking, which has caught Jerome Powell off guard. A hawkish Fed has been pushing interest rates higher, recently claiming they still had headroom to push harder and for longer than before due to the buoyant labor market. Fast forward a few days and two U.S. banks have collapsed. Governments are having a backstop other banks and bail out tech companies hit by the collapse. Suddenly, the headroom appears to have vanished. Looks like Jerome Powell does not know what he's doing or talking about. And it, we have everyday life in America and the rest of the world as proof to that fact. As we said last week, some prominent voices in the crypto space had called the, Silver ba the Silvergate Bank collapse a targeted action by the Fed in a somewhat bizarre conspiracy theory involving SBF. I thought that was just nonsense, just reactionary uh, people talking trash on Twitter. Uh, we drew comparisons between Silvergate Bank and Silicon Valley Bank to illustrate these situations were being caused by a much wider liquidity crunch rather than a conspiracy against crypto in particular. I said the same thing. People are pulling money out of banks for whatever reason, and due to our uh, the way that we have banking set up here, you only have to have X amount to create cash. Uh, they didn't have the cash to cover the withdrawals, so chain reaction, ripple effect across the world. Here we are, fractional reserve banking. According to sources familiar with the approach of regulators in the UK, the main reason for targeting crypto is that they have limited time to restrict its growth before it becomes intertwined with the global financial system. At that point, any action against crypto in general, such as declaring all project securities, will have a negative effect on the whole economy. The silver lining of last week's event is that it indicates time may have run out for regulators to try and contain crypto. Although many focused on Silvergate Bank, the most significant issue was playing out behind the scenes at SVB. And they've got a shot of Luna completely plummeting. Uh, as we've seen in crypto, when a key player goes down, it causes much larger effects throughout the whole market. For instance, the collapse of Luna and FTX took out many projects and investors due to the interconnectedness of the space. The same goes for the tech sector and SVB. This week's regulators, central banks, and politicians have been desperately trying to work out how to approach the situation. In the immediate aftermath, they have numerous problems to try and resolve in a very short time frame. Firstly, they need to provide life lifelines to the building tech sector that was banked at SVB and can no longer access funds to pay suppliers or staff. Governments will have to step in and make alternate funds available within the first half of this week to avoid a cascading collapse of confidence across the board. Now, ain't that something? Free market, my butt. In the UK, HSBC has stepped in with the help of the government and Bank of England to rescue SVB's UK subsidiary. At the time of writing, the US is yet to decide its own course of action for the main SVB business. Secondly, they are urgently reviewing their money tightening policies and trying to find a way to give the market confidence that interest rate hike will be uh, proportionate when will soon end. Managing to do this without stimulating another upswing in markets is a subsequent rise in inflation will be tricky. Will be tricky. Um, finally, they also need to address the, sis the sis systemic risk that the bond markets pose to the global financial system. Following the global financial crisis, the GFC of 2008, we all remember that, banks were instructed to hold a larger portion of their reserves in highly liquid tier one assets. Prior to the GFC, banks were following Basel II 
uh, directives, which stipulated they needed to hold 4% of their reserves in Tier 1 assets. Basel uh, 3 stipulated a 50% increase in the level of Tier 1 reserve banks must hold to provide a bigger cushion for stressful events. As a result of needing more Tier 1 reserves and also needing to find yield-generating safe assets, many banks naturally opted for bonds. The downside of the situation is that bonds are sold during a run and at present, they are worth less than the banks paid for them originally. So they have to sell at a loss like a lot of crypto people in a bear market. Ain't that something? Crypto and the dollar are similar. Crypto isn't magic. It isn't witchcraft. It isn't something that's evil and is going to cause you to lose all of your money. It's just like USD. The same things can happen, people. There's only one is just controlled by either a DAO or nobody at all, while one is controlled by a small group of extremely wealthy individuals that seem to like to play games with the rest of us. Additionally, as a large volume of bonds enter the market, their overall values plummet, as we saw with last year's sell-off of UK bonds. Go figure. The bond situation is by far the largest problem. If the Fed continues to raise interest rates aggressively, it risks another GFC, with all major banks at risk of collapse since they are all heavily invested in bonds. If depositors lose confidence in banks, it could trigger multiple runs, which even the larger banks are vulnerable to due to the small percentage of deposits they hold in reserve. So they need to get out of these risky bets that they're placing. Ironically, this situation is being made worse by the central banks themselves. As they raise interest rates, there is less demand for business and consumer loans. So banks seek alternative ways for earning yields, such as buying bonds. As rates go up, the need for the banks to buy bonds increases. And at the same time, the value of the ones they already hold decreases. If the Fed, so they're basically eating their own limbs, if the Feds and other central banks choose to continue to hike interest rates at anything other than a slow and measured pace, it's likely to begin to see more banks collapse. This makes it almost certain that the Fed will raise by a maximum of 25 basis points this month and indicate that their tightening will slow or stop in the near future. Quite how they do this after they've said the opposite is anyone's guess. As with anything in finance, it's all about confidence. If the Fed is honest and admits that their banking system is at imminent risk of failure, it will trigger bank runs. Therefore, expect another narrative to emerge. With the present situation, uh, is harmful to everyone's crypto portfolio and the market in general. It provides a glimmer of hope that the liquidity crunch may end soon. I don't see it ending soon. I don't see some bear market emerging and, you know, Dan makes the videos and stuff, but I just... Don't see it because I do not trust our government. We don't know what we're doing right now. We're just doing stuff and it's not working. Jerome Powell does not have control over the, the economy. Uh, uh, Janet Yellen saying that the, the economy is strong. And that was earlier today on the 23rd. What is it? The 23rd? I don't even know what it is. 22, the 22nd. Earlier today. So the 21st, morning of the 21st, she's saying, the markets are strong. No, they're not. Ma'am, they are not. We all know they're not. They're pushing this narrative to keep people from running on banks, the banks that they set up to work the way that they're currently working. When a bunch of people are not safe and feel worried and want to take their money out of the banks, the banks don't have the money to give them. And when they go to get this liquidity, they sell the assets that they're holding, bonds, and as they sell these bonds, to get liquidity, the bond price drops and they have to keep buying more. So they're, again, they're just eating their own limbs. We just, we asked for this when we voted for Joe Biden. We got what we asked for. We got what we asked for. So let me know what you think about this. Make sure you uh, hit that like, hit the share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.